This is a QA A level chemistry question. It's from paper three. It's an RPA7 required practical question. Um, and we're going to take a look through. I'm going to recommend that you pause, have a go at each section for yourself, and then review your answers. So let's start off with part A, part B, part C, part D. and part E. And for part E, you will need the graph that you've completed in part D. So let's start to take a look through the answers. We've got hydrogen peroxide breaking down into water and oxygen, catalyzed by manganese 4 oxide. Student determining the order of reaction with respect to H2O2 using a continuous monitoring method in the experiment. So the student placed the H2O2 in a conical flask with the catalyst and using a gas syringe collected the oxygen formed, recording the volume of oxygen every 10 seconds for 100 seconds. Why would the reaction be fastest at the start? Well, this takes us right back to GCSE chemistry, actually, that when we think about um, rates of reaction, the initial rate is generally faster because you've got more reagent. More reagent means a higher frequency of collisions, and that means that you are going to end up with a greater frequency of successful collisions. So these are the two marks. There's a higher concentration of reactants at the start, so a greater frequency of successful collisions. Please note, greater frequency is really important as terminology. You can't simply say more. Okay, let's move on to part B. We've got a graph here. Um, and tangents to the curve can be used to determine rates of reaction. Draw a tangent to the curve when the concentration of hydrogen peroxide is 0.05 mol dm to the minus 3. Use that to calculate the gradient of the curve at this point. So remember, when you draw a tangent, it should touch the curve at the point that we are measuring and only at the point that we are measuring. It should not cross the line, it should not touch it again. As a straight line, it couldn't really do that anyway. Now you'll also notice that I've taken it all the way to the axes, I've extended it because that now allows me to more easily determine the numbers that are needed for the gradient. I'm going to do change in y over change in x. That comes to 0.072 over 52, giving me a value of 0.00138. Okay, we move on to part C. We've got here, concentration of hydrogen peroxide solution at time t during the experiment can be calculated using this expression. This isn't an expression that you will likely be familiar with, but they've given it you and they've told you exactly what all of the things mean. Um, use figure one and the expression to calculate H2O2 t when 20 centimeter cubed of oxygen has been collected. So we know that the initial H2O2 is 0.083. We're reading that directly from the graph. So I am now going to work out H2O T. We know that we start with the 0.083, our H2O2 initial. And we are multiplying that by Vmax take Vt over Vmax. Well, Vmax has been provided as 100 cm cubed. Our Vt is the volume of oxygen gas collected at time t, and the volume that we have been told is 20. So I'm essentially doing 80 over 100. If I put all of that in, I will get to a value of 0.0. .0 six six four mole dm to the minus three so even though it isn't a formula that you will have been taught everything has been provided going through the different stages to tell you what numbers to substitute in okay let's go to part d plot the data from the table above and draw a line of best fit now very very quickly i'm going to plot those in you can see that they are coming out as a straight line can't really see any anomalies on there so i am going to use a ruler to take that line through i'm now going to transfer that graph over to help us to answer part e use figure two to determine the order of reaction with respect to h2o2 um, state how the graph shows this order. Well, 
You will be familiar with characteristic graph shapes for zero order, first order, and second order. This one is the characteristic graph shape for first order. And why is that? Well, the graph is showing us it's a straight line graph. And if I go from 0.02 concentration and I double to 0.04, I also double the rate. If I double from 0.04 to 0.08, I double my rate. So they are directly proportional, which tells us it's first order. That takes us to the end of this question. Thank you for listening and goodbye.